kick it, Jackie Chan. Oh, Jamar Chase with the dive. You know, Garrett Wilson's wide open. Garrett Wilson, touchdown Barrett. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the video in the World of Juice channel and welcome back to another episode of the 2012 Cleveland Browns rebuild changing their history. Last episode we were on the cusp of greatness. We almost won the Super Bowl. We didn't end up doing it unfortunately but we're still very very young. We still got a lot of to look forward to in the rest of these years that we've got left in this series. I think it's only up from here. I mean, everybody's getting better. We've got so much young talent. The offensive line's really, really good. Obviously, we've got Johnny Manziel, who we signed to a Supermax seven-year contract, so he's locked up for the rest of this rebuild. And we've got decent weapons around him. we got a great running back. we got an amazing defense. I see championships on the horizon, we just have to get there in the simulation, which is the, the toughest part of any rebuild, is the Madden simulation. So, let's go see just how good this team can become. Because I think we're on we, we are right on the cusp of just becoming a dynasty. I think it can happen, but it starts right now. So if you guys are excited, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and let's continue rebuilding the 2012 Cleveland Browns. This is what the roster will look like headed into this season. Johnny Manziel, obviously our starting quarterback. We signed him to a seven-year super max contract. He is here for the remainder of this series as our starting quarterback. Whether that's good or bad, he's our guy. <laughs> he is our guy. So I'm excited to have him here. He's playing up to a 91 overall. He's a true 90 overall X-Factor quarterback. And I would assume with another really good season... He could be 95, 96 overall by the Super Bowl if we get there. Derrick Henry is our running back with Aaron Jones and Phillip Lindsay behind him. We've got two solid receivers that I trust in Stefan Diggs and Randall Cobb. And then a couple younger guys that are, are okay, like Chris Godwin and Kendrick Bourne, who I like. Obviously, we know they're pretty solid players in real life, but they're still pretty young in this, in this universe, and they're not super high overall. So we'll see how they get on. And then we've got James Washington, the rookie. Uh, who's still super low overall. He could turn into something, I guess. Offense line's looking really, really good. We've got Scherf, we got Frederick, we got Ramchick, who are all, I think, sub-25, right? Ramchick's 24. I think Frederick might be 26, actually. He's 27. Okay, so he's 27. And then Scherf, he can't be super old, is he? He's 26. Okay, so we've still got a fairly young offensive line. We've got Moten. We've got, obviously, the franchise left tackle, Joe Thomas. Travis Kelsey's still here. We could use a backup tight end because Darren Waller's not really becoming anything. Now, he could become something if we switch to Kansas City's playbook. That's pretty obvious. But we could, we, we could use another tight end to back up Travis Kelsey just in terms of pure overall. And then on the defense, we've got maybe the best defense in the league. We've got Jadeveon Clowney, Aaron Donald, and Miles Garrett on defense line. That is a unbelievably good defensive line. Fantastic. And then we've got Judon, Hargrave, Ngakwe, David Onyemata all behind them. With well, Atiba Rubin, who's starting to get a little bit older. We might need to move on from Atiba Rubin here pretty soon. We'll figure that out as we go. Corners are looking solid. we got Jalen Ramsey, who's a stud. We've got A.J. Bouye, who's becoming a stud. Joe Hayden's been a stud. Quandre Diggs is a solid player. Desmond King down here is a solid player. we got great, great cornerback depth. We don't need to worry about that. Safety depth, on the other hand, not so much. We have Buda Baker and Tony Jefferson, so that's okay. T.J. Ward's the only strong, uh, yeah, strong safety we have. Linebackers are looking amazing. Kevin Pierre-Lewis, I would expect to only get better with T.J. Watt behind him. We got Reuben Foster, who's amazing. We got Blake Martinez behind him. We've got Fred Warner, who's just a rookie, who's going to be amazing. And then we got Deion Buchanan behind him. We've got great linebacker depth. We're looking pretty solid there. This team is freaking amazing, man. Our defense, I might think that this defense is the greatest defense of all time. It's it's could get up there if we get good uh, good development. Now, what year are we on? Are we on 2018? No. Are we on 2019? Hold on. What class was 2018? That's Saquon Barkley. Is, is this Fred Warner? Is he in this class? Uh, Fred Warner. Okay, so 2018 was just the year that we had. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Fred, uh, 2018 was just the year that we had, so we need to go to 2019. 
Here it is. Kyler Murray, Nick Bosa, Quinn and Williams. Okay, so we need to probably focus a little bit on defensive tackle depth and maybe some wide receiver depth. But other than that, and maybe strong safety. But the, other than that, I think we can be pretty good with this team for the long haul. So quarterback, we're not really in the market for, but I wouldn't mind a Dwayne Haskins, that's for sure. RIP to him. Uh, who else is down here? Even Gardner Minshew is a backup. Would not be the worst thing in the world. There's Jake Browning as well. Having a good season for the Bengals as backup for uh, Joe Shiesty. The running back situation, we're pretty good at it. I mean, we got Aaron Jones behind Derrick Henry, so we're not, like, absolutely in need of a running back. But Alexander Madison, Tony Pollard down the board. If we could grab one of those up with a late-round pick, that would be something I'd be down for, for sure. And then the wide receivers, where I could see our, ourselves going. Debo, I'll put on there. Not going to put Nikhil Harry. A.J. Brown would be cool. D.K. obviously would be amazing. Terry McLaurin. A lot of these guys would be really, really cool to get. There's some very good players in this class. There are some very, very good players in this class. We could end up with one, maybe two really solid receivers, and I would be very happy with that. I would be very, very happy with that, but I'm not seeing anybody down the board that I like. Tight end. I did talk about maybe needing a tight end, and this is the Hawkinson class with Noah Fant, Irv Smith. I'll put Irv Smith on there. Dawson Knox down the board, Foster Moreau. Some interesting guys. Nobody that we need to absolutely like trade up for or anything. We're not going to be in the market for TJ Hawkinson. Left tackle. We do need to think about the future after Joe Thomas because I don't know how many more years we're going to go. And Joe Thomas was already is already pretty old, so we're going to have to figure this out. Dalton Reisner I like. This might not be the class for a backup left tackle or for a future left tackle. Uh, left guard, I'm not seeing a whole lot that I like here. I mean, there's a couple names, but not really. Center, Elton Jenkins, Eric McCoy could be something. I like both of those guys. We could even move him to guard, I guess. Or at least Elton Jenkins, we could move to guard. Right tackle, maybe Juwan Taylor. Caleb McGarry, I'll, I'll put on the board, but he might not be a guy for us. Just to keep an eye on, I guess. It's not a great offensive line class this season. Defensive line, Rashawn Gary for sure would be a guy I would I would definitely take a look at. We could even have him as an outside, stand him up as an outside linebacker like he is in real life, and he would be amazing. Right end, obviously I'm looking at Brian Burns, I'm looking at Montez Sweat, I'm looking at Max Crosby for sure. Third to, three to, uh, ugh. Round three to four, and I, I, I'm looking at him a lot. Charles Amenihu, who I'm looking at as well. Right end, I'm seeing some guys I like. That is for sure. D-tackle, I did talk about we need. Ed Oliver, Christian Wilkins, Dexter Lawrence, Jeffrey Simmons. I mean, there's four guys right here that we probably should come away with. One of these guys probably is the heir apparent to Atiba Rubin, and I would like it to be either one of these two, but we'll see. We will see where we are in the draft. Even a guy like Draymond Jones or Greg Gaines could be something for us. <sighs> Left outside linebacker Josh Allen. Who else? Who else? Dre Greenlaw could be something. He might be a little bit of a, more of a project. Aziz Alshair could be something. Devin White at middle linebacker. Devin Bush even. We'll probably not be in the, the market for Devin, Devin White because he's, he's predicted to go top five. Bobby Okereke. I could certainly be think uh, thought about even Andrew Van Ginkle. Ginkle! Right outside linebacker Cody Barton, Quincy Williams, uh, probably not anybody else. Corners. We're really good at corner, but I'll put some guys on the board just in case. Murphy Bunting, Greedy Williams, Trayvon Mullen. Uh, who else? Jamel Dean down the board is certainly somebody. Amani Oruarie. For sure could be a value pickup is there anybody else there's got to be more people than just that i guess not i'm not really seeing anybody else that uh, piques the old interest all right free safety darnell savage nasir adderley juan thornhill chauncey gardner johnson uh that's probably it and then strong safeties taylor rapp amani hooker harley nor Donovan Wilson even is an undrafted guy. Kickers. Is there anybody in the kicker spot? Probably not. Punter spot. Scottish Hammer. Maybe. Alright, so we've got our board. 
pretty much figured out of all the guys I would be interested in drafting. I feel like we have to come away with a receiver, whether it's Debo, AJ Brown, DK, Terry McLaurin, Deontay Johnson, one of these guys we have to come away with. We probably have to come away with a defensive lineman, and that means both the edges and the D tackle. So I would be okay with a Rashawn Gary, I'd be okay with a Brian Burns, a Montez Sweat, I'd even be okay with a Max Crosby, obviously. I want one of these two guys, Christian Wilkins or Dexter Lawrence. Linebacker is not necessarily something we need because I feel like we're really good at depth there. And then the safety class isn't amazing, or the DB class in general isn't amazing. We are pretty thin at, at safety. So maybe we come away with the safety as well. I don't know. We got, we got some plans. We've definitely got some plans. Uh, corner and receiver are always the strong suit. I think I'm just going to go receiver so we know like AJ Brown and, and Terry and all those guys. But this is a big season. This is a very important season because, I mean, we've made it to a Super Bowl. So we are proven that we can win games and win the important games. Now we just got to go do it again and this time go all the way. So I'm going to simulate to the week eight mark and I'll catch back up with you guys when I'm there so we can go over all the scouting stuff. We've made it to the week eight mark and what I said at the beginning of the season was not lies. We are good. We're 7 and 0. Oh. The rest of the AFC North is not having a good year. Everybody else is literally 2 and 5. We are 7 and 0. Oh. I don't know if that's going to hold on. But we are 7 and 0 oh right now. We're having ourselves a pretty good start to the year. And we can set our national focus to wide receiver. I thought about maybe changing it to D tackle since D tackle is maybe more of a need than receiver is, but it's whatever. It's whatever. Players that are ready to negotiate new contracts. We actually have some money this year, and we need to sign Aaron Donald. We need to sign Jadeveon Clowney, Stefan Diggs. We've got a lot of people that need new contracts, and I don't know if we're going to have the money to bring everybody back, but there's always restructuring to get some free money. That is for sure. Luckily, Aaron Donald and Jadeveon Clowney both want to be back, so I'm going to get Aaron Donald for seven years. Why not? I mean, he wants to be here, might as well capitalize on it. We are paying a hefty bonus on Aaron Donald, but it's Aaron Donald. So he's going to come back, and we've got him locked up for seven seasons. Jadeveon Clowney, also want him back for, let's say, six seasons on Jadeveon. And we'll see what he says to that. He wants to say yes, but he can't fully commit right now. Wow. Wow, Jadeveon. I can't believe you. And we don't have enough money in the, the coffers to offer Stefan Diggs right now. So we're going to simulate a week, go back and talk to Jed Evian, and then we're going to have to start uh, freeing up some money by restructuring some of those older deals we made. Because we got to screw the future. We won 41 to nothing over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Everybody's getting better. You love to see it. Let's renegotiate with Jed Evian Clowney now. Let's do this. So we offered him six years, 13, 16. I guess we'll offer him 14 and see what he says to that. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done. Perfect. So we've got our two franchise defensive linemen locked up for six years and seven years. So we're pretty much locked up the entirety of this series. We don't have to worry about that. But if we want to bring back Stefan Diggs and Travis Frederick and all those guys, we're going to have to have some conversations about some money. Gonna have to have some conversations about some money. And we could start to to move around the money on Johnny Manziel. That could be pretty fun. I bet that would free up a lot of money if we restructured his deal. Restructure his contract. It would probably screw us up whole heavily. Is that even a word? Whole heavily? It would probably screw us up in the future, is what I'm saying. But we'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, Joe Hayden, we do his every season. Can we do it one more time? We can. He always gets, he's, he's like the top candidate for restructure every season. We call him in, we're saying, we're restructuring your contract. Uh, let's see, we can probably get Bouye on a restructure, and we can. Let's restructure his deal. All right, so with just those guys restructured, how much money is that free up? Because those are some pretty hefty contracts we freed up. That frees up 95 million, perfect. We can now offer Stefan Diggs. We can get him on a five-year deal, probably about 12 and 10. And he's going to come back. Perfect. $76 million to get Travis Frederick back. Absolutely. Four-year deal on him. $7 million, $6 million. He says that's good. $64 million right where we were at the start. 
Uh, I want Quandre Diggs back, and he's not going to be super expensive, so we can get him back fairly easily. We'll go two on that. He says that's perfect. 59 million. We got to get Joe Thomas back, that's for sure. I don't know if he's going to live out the life of this contract, but definitely got to get him back regardless. We'll give him 14 and 16. He says, I'm starting to like the offer, but I'm not sure if this team... Okay, okay, Joe. All right, we're going to have to give you a little bit more than that, I guess. Um, Now we're getting into the weeds here. We're obviously going to accept the options on both of those guys. We're starting to get into the weeds. I want Dion Buchanan back, so I'll offer him a contract, but we are going to have to overpay. Which kind of sucks, but it's okay. That's a good offer. Got the deal done. 19 million. We'll come back to... I mean, Lyle Collins isn't expensive at all. So we'll get him back until he's 30. Offer a 500k bonus. He's coming back perfect. So that really didn't take up much money. So we need to free up some money to get these guys back. How are we going to do that? We might try to trade Randall Cobb. But that could be tricky. That could be kind of tricky. Which is why we need to come away with some receivers in the offseason or in the draft. That is for sure. All right, so we are at week 11. We need to upgrade our players. Everybody's getting better. Take it on the Chargers, but now we need to go into the focus players and choose a focus player. Who do we want to utilize these on? Probably a D tackle. We already know all three of these receivers that I'm interested in taking. We already know 100% on that. That's perfect. And we know Terry's going to be good as well. So let's use. The question is, where are we going to be in the draft? Obviously, if we only have our, our only, if we only have our own first round pick, we're not going to be picking very high because we're going to be we're obviously nine and zero. We're going to be pretty good. So. We have to probably play like a Max Crosby type. And he's gotten moved down actually to day three instead of strictly just day three to four. He's now solely day three, which is interesting. Uh, we'll probably want to use one on Christian Wilkins. And I might use the other one on Dexter Lawrence if we're being totally honest. I think I'm going to do that. We're going to use it on Dexter Lawrence as well. So we've got Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, and Dexter Lawrence are my three guys right now. And I will quickly just check and see. Did I make any trades for draft picks? Do I only have my own first round pick? Yes, I do. Okay, I wasn't 100% sure. We have a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6. That's all we have this year. And then we go into 2020 with a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6, and a 7. And then all of our 2021 picks. Okay, so we don't have a 4 or 5 the next two seasons. This season and next season. And we're going to be pretty high in the, the round because we're obviously really really good so that's a little bit of a tricky thing to to work around but that's what happens when you're a really good team that is what happens when you are a really good team you are the target of all the the hate and you are obviously going to be hindered the most in drafting because you're you're the last pick or one of the last picks luckily for us this year the division is not good the division is very, very bad. We continue to win a bunch of games. Taking on a decent Patriots team. 8-4 is pretty good. And they are our first loss. Alright, so we will not go undefeated this year. We got pretty close. Made it to week 15. Or made it to week 14, I guess, with an undefeated record. But can we ride it out with just one loss? Or will we lose more? We beat the Lions... Taking on the Colts here. We're obviously the number one seed. I don't think there's a team that's better than us. 14-1. and one. Can we go 15-1 and one here against a good Packers team? We will go 38-31 to 31 over the Packers. You'd love to see it. Bunch of upgrades. Johnny Manziel's a 92. We are playing amazing. And can we finish the season strong? 16-1, and one, baby. Let's do it. There it is, 16-1. We only beat them by two. Beat the Vikings 28-26, but a 16-1 regular season is pretty gosh darn good. And we will ride the momentum as the one seed into the playoffs. 
Let's take a look at these stats. First off, what scheme are we running? Why did we do so good? We're still on Philadelphia's playbook. Very interesting. I guess Johnny Manziel is just that guy. He is just him. Stats on the year. Manziel had 4,400 yards, 29 touchdowns to just five picks with a 72% completion percentage. Johnny Manziel is the real deal. I'm glad that we kept him around as our franchise quarterback because he is unbelievably good. Derrick Henry had a phenomenal season alongside him with 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns. Uh, Stephon Diggs, 1,400 yards and eight touchdowns. Amazing. Travis Kelsey almost had 1,000 yards with seven touchdowns. Randall Cobb had a really good year. Chris Godwin even had a really good year. All right, so we were spreading the wealth around. And then defensively, Kevin Pierre-Lewis again with 114 tackles. Ruben Foster killed it with 112. Joe Hayden had 79. Donald had 78. Uh, sack, or not sack, leader tackle for loss leader was Donald with 18. Ruben had 12, 10 for Garrett, 9 for Clowney. And Aaron Donald continues to be Aaron Donald. We signed him for a seven-year contract, and he is delivering on that contract. 22 sacks fantastic season that's got to be contention for defensive player of the year i mean we know how much madden weighs the sack uh stat so that's got to be up there nine sacks for Clowney, seven for reuben five and a half for garrett two for foster four picks for kevin pierre lewis okay desmond king and jalen ramsey had three and then tj ward hayden and buck uh, buchanan had one so that is what we're looking at in terms of uh stats for the boys and now we take on the Buffalo Bills. It's going to be pretty tough, but I mean, we're 16-1 for a reason. I feel like just heading into the playoffs, we should cruise to a victory here. But you know how Madden likes to work. You have a fantastic, unbelievable season where you go undefeated or you go one or two losses, and then you lose your first playoff game. That's synonymous with Madden simulation, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen here. But it's us and the Bills, Patriots, Jaguars, who are the Patriots are the only team that beat us last year, or this past season. It's Washington and Dallas, and then Carolina and Philadelphia. All right. It's going to be a, a battle, but I think we can get it done. I, I really do think we can get it done. Bills and Browns, AFC Divisional Round. This should be fairly straightforward, but we know how man simulation works. Luckily, it was kind to us. 28-24, a little bit closer than I would have liked, but... We still get the W nonetheless. And now we take on the team that is the the only one to beat us in the regular season. It is the New England Patriots. Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, Julian Edelman, all the boys. Although it's twenty, it was 2012 when we started this, so Julian Edelman's probably not as good as he was, is in real life. This is going to be a tough one. This is going to be a very tough game. They beat us in, in the, the regular season. Dallas upsets the number one seed of Washington. So now it's two versus six, Dallas and Carolina, and a one versus two. So the two best teams in the um, in the AFC do battle for the title. And then the second best team and the sixth best team do battle in the NFC side of things. It's going to be very interesting. I don't know who I would rather play. If we do somehow make it past the Patriots, I don't know if I would rather play the, the Panthers or the Cowboys. It's, it's, it's up in the air. I don't, I don't really know, but... I guess we we can't look that far because we got to focus on getting through the Patriots first, the only team to beat us. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit worried about this. Patriots beat us in the regular season, gave us our only loss, ruined our undefeated season. 35-24. We beat the Patriots. We are playing in the Super Bowl. We've got our redemption. We are the AFC champions. We take on the Carolina Panthers in the Super Bowl. I mean, it's destiny, isn't it? We went on this magical run where we're 16-1. and We've cruised through the division around in the AFC title game, and now it's time to play the Carolina Panthers, who destroyed the Cowboys, 32-10. It's the matchup you would expect. It's one versus two. This is what you would expect to see in a Super Bowl. We just got to get the job done this time. So I will see you guys in the game, where hopefully we come out with a championship it is our redemption arc cleveland and carolina in the super bowl we've got to get this done we're taking on cam newton and the panthers we know how talented this panthers team is and they are off to a good start in this super bowl this is not good it's 16 nothing what is happening boys why are we down 16 to nothing in the super bowl when we're trying to win a championship here are we really going to be that team that goes to the super bowl a bunch of times but can't ever win the big one that's a tight throw and a tight window to Stefan Diggs. 
to start this third quarter here. We're going to go Z spot. Uh, I might have it here. That's a tight throw as well. Randall Cobb pulls it in. Johnny Manziel's got an interception this game. No touchdowns, obviously. Very tough season or tough game so far for... That's a risky throw, but Diggs holds on to the catch. I might have been able to hold that for Randall Cobb, but I, I, didn't, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make the play or not. Derrick Henry fights forward. He's got the first down. 11 carries, only 41 yards. I do have my X-Factor activated with Johnny Manziel, but I'm not sure what it is. Oh, it's, it's a running gun. Okay. Well, I should have Travis Kelsey here. Travis Kelsey's into the end zone, and we are in this game. We scored very quickly. We are in this game. They want to go for two. I don't really want to run the two. We got it. Okay. Can the defense step up here? Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? Cam Newton passed to Jarvis Landry. 79-yard touchdown. Are you serious? A 79-yard touchdown? It's just not meant to be, is it? It's just not meant to be. I think the Panthers are destined to win this Super Bowl. We had such a good season, and to, for it to go down like this, there's a flag on the play. Is it holding? It is going to be a hold. So it's third and 12 now. Ryan Ramchick. Unless they decline and go fourth and two. No. They make it. Third and 12. Do I try to hit Travis Kelsey here? I think that's the smartest thing to do, but I panicked and I threw it and I dropped it. I panicked. I, I was going to press Kelsey, but then the pressure was getting in my face. I didn't have anything to go there. Okay, we get the ball back. That's good. Panthers don't do anything with it. But now we need to score. I mean, we cannot waste time with this nonsense here. We need to score in the Super Bowl. That's going to be Stefan Diggs. He's having himself quite the game. We're going to go with a dagger play. Are they nowhere? Uh, and if I can fire that in, what a tight throw. Randall Cobb, big catch. That is as risky as risky gets in the Super Bowl. Oh, uh, that's a floater. Wounded duck. Knocked incomplete. I'll take that. I got hit on the throw. Didn't really have much there. As long as it didn't get picked off, I'm happy. Because that could have been a lot worse. That could have been a lot worse. I'm actually going to step up in the pocket and run with Johnny Manziel. I had some room, but he didn't really have the change of direction that I needed. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. It's the fourth quarter in the Super Bowl, and we are down big. We need a miracle to win this game. We need a touchdown here pretty much right away. And then we need to have a quick stop and nothing doing for Carolina. But that's not going to happen, is it? Manziel, deep play, catch. Oh, it's broken up. I thought Travis Kelsey brought that in. It would have been fantastic if he would have did it. We have to go for this, obviously. Carolina's got so many. Look at all the superstars and uh, X-Factors and stuff they have on this team. There's a reason they were in the Super Bowl. And that's pressure. That's a lob. It's going to be picked off, actually, off the deflection. I think that might have been my last effort because the time's just running out. The Panthers brought pressure on the fourth down. I didn't have anything there. We get the ball back, actually, pretty pretty quickly. See, if we were just scoring touchdowns and getting the ball back, I'd be happy. But we're not, we're not scoring touchdowns. We're just turning the ball over and then getting the ball back. We're just wasting time. That's not a great throw. Chris Godwin brought it in. Oh, my God. Did you see that catch from Chris Godwin? That was a fantastic catch. Not a great ball. Not a great decision either. But he, he brought it in. I don't like the fact that the Panthers are so good. Randall Cobb. <gasps> oh. That might be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. That might legit be the greatest catch I've ever seen in my life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I was getting hit on the throw. It's lobbed in the air. Randall Cobb steals it from, I'm assuming that's Kyle Fuller? It could be Kendall Fuller. It's one of the Fullers. Or I guess it could be Jordan Fuller, really. Uh, I think it's Kendall Fuller. But he steals it from his hand, pulls it down one-handed, oh my god, and then stays in bounds to, keep, to complete the catch. That, I know it's all like... A video game catch and that would never happen in real life that's physically impossible 
Uh, but this is the greatest catch I've ever seen. <laughs> there's, there's no... I watched the Odell Beckham catch live. I watched a bunch of catches live. I watched the Minneapolis Miracle live. Uh, this is the greatest catch I've ever seen. And it happened in the Super Bowl? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god, it's the greatest catch ever. It doesn't get better than this catch. You've never seen anything better. You're lying if you say you have. It's the greatest catch ever. He did it one-handed in the Super Bowl with all the lights shining brightest. He did it. Randall Cobb, and now we have to trade him in the offseason. <laughs> oh, Kendrick Bourne held on. Big catch. I don't really want to run this football, but it might be the best option here. Derrick Henry gets the first down. We're taking a little bit too much time for my liking. I don't really like this play, though. There's not really anything here that I want to call. That's the only problem. I might try to send Derrick Henry on like a ghost route and then stand up in the pocket. Johnny Manziel into the end zone. Touchdown, Browns. It's not over just yet. I know it seems like it might be, but it is not over just yet. We only got one. We only went for one. Oh, no. Carolina's moving the football very efficiently. This is not good. Third and 10, fourth and 11. They kick a field goal, and we have 34 seconds. We can't win. There's simply no way that we can win this game. There's just not enough time. 34 seconds. We can't score. One, score, one touchdown is not going to win this game, so... That's a little... Oh, I got hit on the throw again. I think that might have been uh, Luke Keekley who hit me on that. The offensive line just isn't giving me the time. I'm not getting the time to be able to find my receivers. And our defense did not stop... They did not stop uh, Cam Newton in this offense. I'm not even moving the football anymore. I don't even know why I'm trying to score. I mean, it's not like we can score and tie the game, so... We are going to fall just short in another Super Bowl. That's a little bit upsetting. Did he hold on to that? Get his feet in bounds? Chris Godwin, great catch. That's kind of crazy. I honestly didn't think he was going to hold on, or uh, he wasn't going to get his feet in bounds. Travis Kelsey, great diving catch, but I don't think we're going to have enough time to snap it, and we don't. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. Carolina Panthers get the Super Bowl over us. Oh, that's brutal, man. Another lost opportunity. This team is good, but we just can't get it done when it matters the most. We can't get it done when it matters the most, and that's the most frustrating part. Because we are expensive, and we're just falling short in the big one. That's not, that's not a spot you want to be. That is certainly not a spot you want to be. Jarvis Landry, because he had that 79-yard touchdown pass, gets the MVP of the Super Bowl. Aaron Donald does, in fact, win uh, Defensive Player of the Year. No surprise there. Uh, we win Coach of the Year. Rodgers is MV MVP of the league. Bradley Chubb and Michael Gallup are the Rookies of the Year. But, yeah, we lost to the Falcons last season in our first-ever Super Bowl appearance, and now we make it back again, and we lose to Carolina. We can't beat the NFC South, apparently. Oh, that's tough. That's so tough, man. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl losses. Are we that team? Are we the team that loses in the Super Bowl? We're, we're so good. We have great regular seasons, but we can't get it done when it matters the most. Joe Thomas has retired after 12 seasons, so we now need a left tackle. We just re-signed him, but I guess that doesn't matter anymore. We now need a left tackle. And I think I made a mistake in advancing to the offseason before I re-signed a couple people. Oops. We might be losing Randall Cobb now. We have Jake Matthews at left tackle. That's not going to be good. I don't see any development trade upgrades on the offense. Everybody seems to be the same. And then on defense... Fred Warner is a superstar. He might have already been, been that. I don't know if he went up. Everybody else is the same. So no development trade upgrades throughout the entire season, really? I mean, I know we already have a lot of guys that are X-Factor, so it's not like they can go up any higher. But still, like a Buda Baker or 
A Desmond King who had a good year. Quandra Diggs had a good year. No development trade upgrades from them. All right, so we now have to face the music and the fact that we have no money and we need to accept the option on Jalen Ramsey, accept the option on Derrick Henry, can't bring back Randall Cobb, can't bring back Atiba Rubin, although he's 33. Oh, maybe I can make some some money free up for Randall Cobb? Probably not for Rubin. But maybe there's a way I can free up some money to get Randall Cobb back. I don't know. I already restructured Manziel. I can't restructure Donald or Clowney because we just got them. We already did Joe Hayden. We can't do Diggs. We just re-signed him. I don't think Kelsey's would matter that much. I'll do it anyway, but I don't think it's going to matter in the grand scheme. Who else is next? Bouye? We could probably do his. Or did I already, did I already do his? I don't remember. We'll do it again if, if we did. Uh, who else is after that? Buchanan? I think we just re-signed Buchanan. We just re-signed Frederick. Uh, we can do Kevin Peter Lewis. Free up some of that money. Alright, we're working, we're working. Ramsey. We might be able to do. <laughs> He's got his, uh, his neck gator is glitched on there from the, one of the mods I have installed. It's not activated, but it's, it's glitched on there. That's pretty funny. Uh, and we might be able to do Miles Garrett, but that's not going to affect much, is it? I don't think that's going to be enough money. Maybe it's enough to offer him a contract? No, it's not even close. We're still negative 55 million. So we're going to lose out on Randall Cobb. Kind of upsetting because we don't have a lot of receiver depth. We're going to lose out on Tiba Rubin. The rest of these guys aren't big deals, but it does kind of suck. That's what happens. We're expensive. <laughs> we are expensive, and we can't win championships. We can get to the Super Bowl, but we cannot win it for some reason. All right, let's just take a look at what free agency has, even though we're not going to be able to sign anybody. There's Randall Cobb. He's got 21 teams interested in him, as you would expect, because he's the best player that's not an offensive lineman. Oh, that's tough. That's tough. We're going to have pick 31 in the draft, so it's not even like we're drafting at the back of the draft because we were good. It's Well, it's because we won a championship because we can't win one. So we're drafting there at the bottom of the draft with no real, no real success to show for it. And that's the toughest part. We definitely need to use this mock draft number five and see where the receivers are going to go and where the D tackles are going to go because that is going to be absolutely massive. We need to know if they're going to go in the top of the draft or where they're going to go. So Kyler's going to go one to Miami, most likely. Bose is going to go two to Baltimore. Quinny Williams, three. Dexter Lawrence is going to go eight. We certainly can't trade up to eight. Rashawn Gary and Brian Burns are going to go top 15. So is Christian Wilkins. I don't like any of this. I hate my life. Okay. They have us taking Irv Smith. We're not going to do that. Even Debo is projected to go pretty high. Or right above us, I guess. Luckily... DK and AJ Brown are both a little bit later, so we can we can wait on them until the second round. But I, f I mean, we have to get a D tackle now. We don't have a Tiba Rubin, so if we could trade up to get Christian Wilkins, that might be the best idea because I don't think we're going to be able to trade up into the top ten. But trading to the top fifteen with Minnesota might be a little bit easier, especially because I'm pretty sure I already have the the thing spent. Yeah, all of this stuff is spent, except for the smooth talker. I don't have that one yet, but now we do. All right, so now we have that done, but I don't know if that one activates until after we simulate. Let's do our private workouts first, and then we can talk trades. So we want to do... DK is a top five talent in the class. We want to do... Who are we going to be in play for? We already know a lot about Max Crosby. 
I want to come away with Max Crosby at some point. Um, who else am I going to be in play for? I mean, I could play, be in play for Quincy Williams, I guess. Maybe a Jamel Dean. Not having a fourth round pick is pretty tough. Or a fifth round pick. We don't have a fourth or a fifth round pick this year. Or next year. So, that's pretty tough to decide where we're going to be in play for. I'll do it on Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. And we'll do it on... Mm, Dre Greenlaw, because we could be in play for him. And then we'll do it on Max Crosby so we know for sure what his true talent is. All right. That's going to be our final three workouts that we use. We go to the draft, but we probably should trade with the Minnesota Vikings to get Christian Wilkins. I would love to get... I would love to get Dexter Lawrence. I just... I doubt we're going to be able to trade into the top eight, which is what the Steelers have. They want... Three first round picks, two seconds, and a third for pick number eight. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that. I can give you my first this year. I don't even, I can't give you players, but I can give you my 2021 three. I, I don't think it's going to be worth it. I just don't think it's the right idea. We're going to trade with the Vikings, and that might still even be pretty tough. I mean, it's not that far of a way. Pick 13 is not that, not that easy to get either. What what do they want just for it? They want they want Joe Hayden. I don't even think I can do that because I have no money. Yeah, see if I do that, we can't we can't do that because of salary restrictions. So we can't even trade a player straight up for the pick, even though I would I honestly probably would be willing to do that. But our first round pick this year and my third round pick in 2021 gets us into the yellow it's just gonna be too tough i think we're just gonna have to miss out on all of them that's the problem we were so good that we have a, a really bad draft pick but we weren't good enough to win a championship which is very frustrating bosa goes one to miami so miami was projected to take kyler murray they opt to take nick bosa very interesting Quentin williams goes two to the ravens kyler murray is falling down the draft he goes number four to Denver. He was supposed to go number one overall, and he goes number four. Daniel Jones still ends up in New York. Sorry, Giants fans. Devin White. Devin Bush. And now here should be Dexter Lawrence. It's Ed Oliver. There goes Dexter, the next pick to the Raiders. Marquise Brown. Rashawn Gary to Houston. Brian Burns to Arizona. Christian Wilkins of the Vikings. That's who I was trying to get, but we just didn't have the capital to move up. Montez Sweat, Jeffrey Simmons to the Titans, okay. Debo to the Jets, Jerry Tillery, Byron Murphy, Josh Allen, Chris Lindstrom, would have been cool, but Jawan Taylor, TJ Hawkinson, Jonathan Abram, Andre Dillard, Josh Jacobs to Philadelphia is, is crazy. Jags get Terry McLaurin, Washington takes Jelani Tavai, True Lock gets a first round pick to the Cowboys. All right. Patriots get Darnell Savage. And now we are up. We are up in the draft. And I have no idea where to go. We could take Elton Jenkins and have a right guard. But I'm pretty got, I'm pretty fine with, with having Taylor Moten be our right guard. I'm not opposed to it. As for receivers go, we've got A.J. Brown, we've got D.K. Metcalf as possibilities. Do I think either of them make it to the final pick of the second round? I highly, highly doubt it. So I feel like if we're going to grab one of them, we got to grab them now. Uh, Max Crosby's still there, and it says that Max Crosby is a true day three talent, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe he'll be uh, there at the sixth round. I, do I don't think so, though. But he could be, if other teams know that he's a true day three. There's not really anybody else that I want. We got to take a receiver. We got to replace Randall Cobb. So it's going to be probably AJ Brown and then DK Metcalf in the second round. I would guess that's how it's going to go. So let's do that. AJ Brown. We'll take him. That's our Randall Cobb replacement. 
if uh, if DK's there, I know that DK was the top five talent, but I'm banking on the fact that DK slips slips to the last pick of the or one of the last picks of the second round. I don't think he will, but there's always a possibility. There is always a possibility. Andy Isabella, JJ Sega Whiteside, Juan Thornhill, Tristan Hill, LJ Collier. Come on. Marquise Blair, Devin Singletary, Dwayne Haskins to the Chargers, Nikhil Harry to the Chiefs, Trayvon Mullen, Cody Barton, Cody Ford, Nicole Hardman. All right, so Nicole Hardman just went. DK's still pretty far down. He, Deontay Johnson's even ahead of him, and Paris Campbell. So, cross your fingers. Cross your fingers. It's possible. We're only a few picks away. Drew Sample, Rocky Sin, Chase Winovich, and Paris Campbell. Perfect. We can grab DK Metcalf. So, we've got our receiver core figured out for the long haul. DK Metcalf. Got him in the third round. That's a big pickup. That's a real big pickup. Two amazing receivers. Now we pick in the third round, and we're probably going to... I don't even know where we're going to go in the third round. I guess Max Crosby, or maybe we wait till the sixth round to get him? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. So let's take a look at what our board has. This is the last pick until the, the sixth round, so we have to make it count, whoever we want. And there's not a whole lot available. We could grab Jay Greenlaw, who I did say would be somebody I'd be interested in. Maybe even a Jamel Dean I could, I could see grabbing. Um, Jamel Dean does look good, but we have pretty good corner depth already. I mean, we've got Ramsey, we got Bouye, we got uh, Joe Hayden, we got Desmond King. We already have four corners that I like, so Jamel Dean's probably not the guy that we want. Although, to be fair, we already have um, Kevin Peter Lewis and TJ Watt, and then we have Blake Martinez and... Reuben Foster, and then we have uh, what's his face and what's his face, Fred Warner and the other dude behind him. I forget his name already, but we have depth at outside linebacker too. So Dre Greenlaw is not that big of a need either, even though he does look pretty solid. Maybe this is where we go for a Charles Menehue and make him a D tackle. Hmm. Or Greg Gaines, I guess. I think I'm going to take Dre Greenlaw here. I think that's going to be my pick. Dre Greenlaw, third round pick. I think it's a solid pickup. Maybe it's not something we needed, but it is what it is. Next pick is in the sixth round. We'll see what's on the board for us. I have no idea if anybody is going to be on our board. Uh, it's just Al Shaheer and Jamie Gillian. So all of the picks that I was thinking about, they got taken. Okay. Uh, this is not good. Even, uh, what's his face? He was undrafted. It was uh, Donovan Wilson. Donovan Wilson was potentially undrafted, and he got drafted <laughs> before our pick in the sixth round. That's kind of crazy, actually. EJ Speed is available. Caden Ellis is available. We don't need to go for a linebacker. Isaiah Bugs. Do I really go Isaiah Bugs? I mean, we have Jer uh, Javon Hargrave, so it's not like... We need a D-tackle, but there's not really anything else that I want to draft, if we're being totally honest. There's nobody here that I want. Tight end is all gone. I don't want any... I mean, Al Alizé Mack, or whatever his name was. I forget how to pronounce his name. We don't need a receiver. We don't need any more running backs. Quarterback, we could take Jake Browning, I guess. Mm, I guess we take Isaiah Bugs. He's not going to be a good overall. He's going to be very bad, but 
he's a D tackle, and that's what I said I needed to get. <laughs> so that is our draft. All right. We got DK Metcalf and AJ Brown. So I mean that's that's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. 75 for AJ Brown, 77 for DK, 66 for Greenlaw, 65 for Bugs. How is the rest of the class? Quinton Williams 81, Bosa 80, Marquise Brown 80, at Oliver 79, and then DK is right there, the final pick at 77, or the final top five. Dexter Lawrence, Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, it's it's about how it, I thought it would go. I th I thought maybe we could grab somebody else, but not having picks in the in the fourth and fifth rounds is pretty tough. But that's what happens when you trade around earlier episodes. <laughs> the future juice got screwed. But it's okay. Because we're going to look at a positive mindset for next episode. We're going to go into it. We've got two great receivers. DK is going to be our number two already. We've got two great receivers to add to the team. we got great running backs. Offensive line is going to have to do its job, I guess. Because now we got Jack Conklin there at right tackle because Ramchick moves over. That's fine, whatever. And then on the defense, Hargrave's going to have to start at D-tackle too. This could be where we switch to a... This could be something interesting. We could switch to a 3-4. We could switch to a 3-4. That might be a little bit more... They haven't said a base 4-3. If we switch to a 3-4, that would make it so our linebackers would be getting more of the focus instead of our defensive line. Yeah, so instead it'd be Garrett, Donald, and Judon, or Garrett, Donald, and Clowney, and then we could rely on on Blake Martinez, which I do think would be a good idea. And at some point, we're probably going to move Fred Warner into middle linebacker. I might even do that this season, so that Deion Buchanan starts at left outside linebacker, and then I mean, we'll do something with Blake Martinez, I guess. He'll just be a, a depth piece, probably. But if we move Fred Warner into middle linebacker, then him and, and Ruben Foster, I like that a lot better. Buchanan starts at left outside linebacker, or we could start TJ Watt there. You know what? I might even start TJ Watt there so he can get some play time. The defense is still unbelievably good. We're still going to be good this, this next season. It's just disappointing and a little bit uh, frustrating that we couldn't come away with a Super Bowl. In two tries, in two seasons, we couldn't come away with a championship, which is very, very frustrating. So... It is what it is. We'll try again next season. Or next episode, I should say. I guess it is next season. But we'll try again next episode. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Just Club. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I truly appreciate it. That uh, Randall Cobb catch in the Super Bowl is still the greatest catch of all time. Don't at me. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.